Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. A while back, I mounted a hollow sun red dot sight on my Springfield XD pistol. Uh, and I ended up going with, I think it was the hollow sun HE509T model. It was one of their more expensive sights, but the reason I went with it is because it's fully enclosed unlike most of the other red dot sights on the market that are designed for mounting on handguns. Uh, unfortunately, if you want a fully enclosed pistol sight, you don't have many options. You know, there's the Holosun, which is like a $400 sight. There's an aim point model, which is considerably more expensive than the Holosun. And if you want something more affordable, you just don't really have many options uh, until I realized that there are hundreds of these fully enclosed red dot sites available on eBay and Amazon and so forth for like 20 to $25. Uh, now these are not really designed for mounting on handguns. They're marketed more as a rifle sight but some of them are small enough that mounting them on a handgun is not necessarily out of the question. So in retrospect, before I shelled out the money for the Holosun site, I probably should have at least explored the $20 alternative. Uh, and so for my own future reference and the benefit of everybody else out there, I want to go back today and mount this on a pistol, see if it's any good. Now, this is designed to mount on a little piece of Picatinny rail, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is machine a little piece of Picatinny rail, and then we'll mount it on a handgun slide. And I think I found the perfect handgun for this project, uh, namely a Yeet Cannon. Actually, this is the older model, so it predates the semi-official Yeet Cannon designation. Uh, but this is a high point 40 caliber handgun, and as you can probably tell, it's got a really big, blocky, looks like cast iron slide, uh, which gives us a lot of material to work with for mounting that rail. Besides, I think a $20 red dot sight will complement this gun perfectly. So, without further ado, I'm going to disassemble this thing, I'm going to make that little piece of rail, uh, and then when I get everything put back together, we'll see if it works. Okay, correction. Uh, I said this looked like cast iron, but it is totally non-magnetic. So uh, now I'm thinking probably cast zinc. Not that that really makes too much of a difference for what we're going to do with it. Okay, I've got it all put back together, so let's take this yeet cannon out to the range and see what it'll do with a red dot on it.
So the question was, uh, if you're looking to put a fully enclosed optic on a pistol and you're on a tight budget, are these inexpensive sort of rifle style red dot sights an option that's worth considering? And based on what we've seen here today, I think the answer is emphatically yes, they're worth considering. May not always be the best choice, but they're definitely worth considering. In this case, the red dot was a tremendous improvement over the factory sights that came on this high point, uh, and it seemed to hold up just fine. Well, actually I should qualify that because I tried out two different sights and one of them held up and one of them didn't. Uh, I've had this Bushnell TRS-25 lying around for a while now and I don't use it much because it doesn't hold a zero very well. Uh, so I tried this on the high point first just to see if it would work because uh, if it did, I'm happy to leave it on this gun that doesn't get shot much. Uh, but sure enough, uh, every time the slide would cycle, the front lens would uh, apparently get jarred enough that it would shift slightly, and so the position of the dot would change dramatically. You know, I could see it jump like halfway across the viewing window every time I fired. Uh, so yeah, the Bushnell TRS-25 did not hold up in this capacity, and that didn't really surprise me much, you know, given my experience with this sight. Uh, so then I went and put a genuine generic brand uh, red dot sight, such as you can get on eBay for $20 to $25 right now uh, on the high point, and that seemed to hold a zero just fine. Of course, I only fired about 50 rounds in this test, so you know, bear in mind that while the sight did seem to hold a zero just fine in testing, uh, the test was not long enough to really assess long-term durability of the sight in this application. Now, I did have a couple of failures to feed, but I don't think that that was really the fault of the sight. Uh, it seemed like the shells were getting jammed in the top of the magazine, uh, and it was only happening when the magazine was either full or very nearly full. Uh, so I think that that was just a magazine problem or possibly a, a magazine with that particular ammunition combination problem. I don't think that the extra weight of the site and the rail that we added to the slide uh, was really at fault there. Although it's always possible that uh, adding that weight, which would cause the slide to cycle a little bit less energetically, could have compounded the problem. Now, one thing about this style of red dot sight is that it does give you a little bit narrower field of view than a pistol style of red dot would. So if you're someone who has trouble finding your dot in a red dot sight, uh, then using a site like this could exacerbate that problem. That said, in this testing, I didn't feel like it was a problem. Uh, you know, when I was just shooting a bunch of targets from one position, I was able to keep the dot in view pretty easily. Uh, now, when I switched to shooting one-handed so I could hold the camera in the other hand as I'm running through the course to give you a first-person shooter perspective, uh, then it was a little harder to keep the dot in view, uh, and that may have slowed me down a little bit. But overall, uh, I don't feel like it was necessarily a significant problem. On the other hand, the optical clarity of this sight is really pretty good. Arguably a little bit better than, for example, a Holosun 509T, which is a pistol style of fully enclosed red dot sight. Uh, by the same token, the Holosun 509T has a little bit of optical distortion, particularly around the periphery of your sight window. Whereas with this sight, there's no noticeable distortion in your view. Uh, so if you're someone that finds that optical distortion distracting, then maybe trading 
a little bit of your uh, field of view in order to get a sight that doesn't have any distortion and has a little bit better optical clarity uh, could be a really good trade. So this site has its pros and cons. I'm certainly not going to argue that this is the end-all, be-all solution to red dot sights on pistols, but I will say that mounting this sight on the high point here made this gun more fun to shoot. And so, based on what we've seen here today, at least in certain cases, uh, mounting an inexpensive rifle style of red dot sight on a handgun seems like a perfectly good solution. Uh, anyway, that concludes this experiment. So, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.